welcome back to my channel so i am back and i'm gonna be doing a set using the glam and glitz acrylic collection so i'm gonna be using the um some of the colored acrylics as well as the clear and the ultra white so if you haven't watched my video of me swatching all of these colors i'll be sure to leave the link down below because i also have a promo code for them um so i will leave that down below but um she actually chose this nude color which is in the color um let's see it's in the color um never enough nude so i'm gonna be using that today and we're gonna be doing her full set so of course the first thing that we're gonna be doing is just pushing back her cuticles and i'm just using a cuticle pusher i got these from amazon and these actually came with a cuticle pusher as well as a pair of nippers and they just work really good so remember that when we are pushing back the cuticles this is to help expose the new growth and it also helps with reducing lifting so this is something that you don't want to skip and then also with pushing back the cuticles you um can use any type of cuticle pusher whether it's a metal one a wooden one or plastic just make sure that you are able to either throw it away or disinfect it Alrighty, so now to remove the shine from the natural nail, we're going to go in with a 180 sanding band. And I'm using the Melody Susie Scarlet Nail Drill, and I'm going to be using it at 5000 to remove the shine from the natural nail. Remember that this is what I use it on, but whatever you feel comfortable using it at is fine. So as always, we start around the cuticle area first, working our way from the right side over to the left side, and just following the rest of the nail as well. So again, starting from the right side, I usually start from like the nail group, which on the right side, start from right there and slowly work my way around that cuticle area, making sure that we keep our drill moving at all times. We don't wanna just leave it in one spot for too long because it will cause friction and it's gonna cause your client's nail to burn. So keep your drill moving at all times. And also make sure that you don't put too much pressure on the nail. As you can see, I hold their client or I hold her finger with my left hand. I use my thumb and my index finger and hold it. And then with my right hand, I hold my drill just like this. And as you can see, my pinky is like up in the air and I use that to hold the side of their finger so I can get some stability. If I was just going in there like this, my drill would kind of just be like all over the place. But when I hold her finger with my pinky or just set my my pinky on her finger, it gives me a lot of stability so I can, you know, be I'm able to control my drill a lot better. So again, we're just going to go ahead and remove the shine from all of the nails. Our nails, as you guys know, produce a lot of oils and those oils are on our nails, which is why our nails are shiny. And if you leave that shiny layer on the natural nail, the acrylic is going to live within that same day or the next day or whenever, but it, they are going to live. So you have to make sure you go in there and remove the shine. And then also what I'm doing is I'm just following down the nails with the same drill. So I just go along the free edge and just follow down the nail um, again with the same drill bit.
Alrighty, so we finished removing the shine from the natural nails. So we're gonna go ahead and just dust them off. And then after that, we're gonna go in and apply the nail tips. Can I do like the round narrow cottage? Alrighty, so for the nail tips, I'm gonna be using my natural nail tips, which are on my website. I'll be sure to leave the link down below. And then for the glue, I'm gonna be using the KDS glue, which will also be on my website. So remember that when you're applying the nail tips, you wanna make sure that your nail tips fit from sidewall to sidewall. You don't want them to be too small or too big because you will get lifting or breakage. So again, make sure that it fits exactly from sidewall to sidewall. You don't want it sitting there like this to where there's like a little bit of their nail sticking out or you don't wanna to have to force it down because it's gonna to wanna to come back up and that's when the nail will lift. Once you got the correct size, we're gonna apply the glue right on the free edge, or sorry, right on the tip. And then we're gonna grab our tip, turn it over, hold it on their free edge and just press it down for a few seconds. And this glue actually dries really fast, so it only takes like five seconds to dry. So same thing for the rest. Just make sure that again, you size the tip, making sure that it fit exactly from sidewall to sidewall. Apply the glue. Grab your tip, flip it over, hold it on the free edge and glue it down. Make sure that when you're doing this, you're holding their finger really straight along with the tip because you don't wanna glue the nail tip on crooked. And also, if you have a nail tip that's maybe too big and maybe the other one's too small, always go with the bigger one and just file it down on the sides if you need to to make it fit perfectly. You never want to try to force the small one on because then it's going to lift or break. Alrighty, so we finished applying all of the tips. So again, we use the KDS glue and we use my natural nail tips, which are both on my website. Okay, so next we're gonna go in with the tip cutter and we're gonna be trimming the nails down to her desired length. How long do you wanna? Um, kind of long, not too short. Like right there? Yeah, that's fine. Just a little bit shorter. Alrighty, so after we've trimmed down the nails, we're gonna go in and just measure them against each other. So usually what I do is I line up the cuticles to make sure that they're the same size. So as you can see, this one's a tad bit too long, so I'm gonna go in and trim it down just a little bit. I'm gonna grab it again and measure it. Same thing for all of them. So again, make sure that you're lining up the cuticle. Alrighty, so once we've trimmed down the nails, we're gonna go in with a straight edge nail clipper. And these are on my website as well. And we're just gonna trim the sides of the nail tip because she does want them coffin. 
So we're just gonna cut down the size and this is just going to help speed up the process whenever it comes down to filing the nails. So again, we're just cutting the sides. Of course, if your client wants them squared, then you don't have to do this, but only if they want them like coffin or stiletto. It's just gonna help, you know, speed up the process because instead of having to file this off, you can just cut it off. Alrighty, so after we trim down the sides, we're gonna go in with a 100-100 nail file and we're gonna file from the side of the nail, so from the side wall straight towards the um, free edge. So same thing on both sides, make sure that you are holding their finger really straight and you just alternate between side to side. You don't wanna file too much on one side because then your nail is going to be crooked. And then the free edge we file at a vertical angle filing exactly at a 90 degree angle and then just blending the nail tip right in the middle and this just helps with making the nail look a lot more natural once we apply the acrylic Okay, so same thing. So this time, um, I know I always tell you guys to hold your file at a 45 degree angle, but what I've noticed, as you guys know, my shape has improved a lot since the beginning of my videos. Um, and what I've noticed that I've been doing differently is instead of just holding my file like right at a 45 degree angle, I kind of hold it at a 90 degree angle when I'm filing the sides as well. And this makes it have like a more sharper coffin look if that makes sense. Um, so I'll show you just in a few seconds what I mean. Okay, so instead of holding it like this at an angle like to the side, we're filing like straight out. So holding the file straight out instead of like this we're holding it straight out and just following the sides we're still kind of angling the brush instead of just holding it like straight like this we are kind of angling it like this but instead of again holding it at an angle we're holding it straight up but we are turning the file so so it goes like you know into that coffin shape and i feel like that's what's helped me you know with my shaping so then again, just blending the free end, or sorry, blending the middle. Alrighty, so we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing on all of them. So again, following the sides and the free edge at a 90 degree angle. he was already suicidal and he would mm -hmm. be like drunk and, and uh, on drugs and stuff. Oh, God. Alrighty, y'all, so we finished filing this hand. So again, we have that coffin shape that we want and we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other hand. So same thing, we're filing the sides at a 90 degree angle, going from the nail groove towards the free edge, filing out straight towards the tip on both sides, making sure that we alternate from side to side and then filing the fridge also at a 90 degree angle and make sure that when you're filing the fridge, you're paying attention to what you're doing because you will be able to see your shape change as you're filing. So we're gonna go ahead and do this on the rest of the nails and then we'll move on to the next step.
Facebook. Alrighty, y'all. So we finished shaping both of the nails, and this is what they look like. Now I don't have a primer for the uh, Glam and Glitz acrylic system, so I'm gonna just be using my Young Nail Protein Bond. I know a lot of people like to use the Protein Bond with other acrylic systems. As you guys know, I use it with my Mia Secret, and I don't have any problems with lifting. So we're gonna apply that on the natural nail, making sure that we don't get it on the skin because if they have any cuts, it could burn them. Alrighty, so again, we're gonna be using the color Never Enough Nude nudes and then we're also going to be using the clear one probably the white one i might throw some marble or not marble but um ombre in there as well and then again the clear and then of course their monomer and i'm just using the same monomer that i used to swatch my colors because it's still clean let me see um so most likely i'm going to be adding some bling and if i do it's going to be on the ring finger so for that finger, I'm going to go in and just do the clear. So I'm just dipping my brush into my monomer. I'm going to dip it into the clear, get a nice size bead, placing it closer to the cuticle area. Again, as you can see, it's not runny. It keeps its shape. And then we're just going to pat it down and gently brushing it down towards the tip. Alrighty, so that was just one bead and as you can see like it went on really good we're still gonna have to add a little bit more but not very much at all because it gave us a nice thickness so i'm gonna go in with a really small bead um probably around the cuticle area to help build our apex pat it down and then brushing it down towards the tip really gently Again, I love how easy it is to work with. You don't have to just add so much acrylic. So I definitely like that because most likely I'm not going to have to do like the four bar method like I always do. Yes, it's helpful for beginners because they help you, you know, have a technique down. But with this one, like I definitely do not need four beads. Um, as you can see, just with two, like we have a nice apex as well as a nice thickness at our tip. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next one. Um, so for this one, I think I'm gonna do the ombre. So I'm gonna do a very small thin, or a really small bead of the clear acrylic over the entire nail. And that's just for next time when we do a feel, you know, if she wants to get a different colored acrylic or just do something different with her nails, we can just file away the colored acrylic and she'll still have that clear underneath so we don't have to do a whole new set. After that, we're gonna go in with the white and I'm gonna get just a small bead, placing it right in the middle where the natural nail and the tip meet, patting it down and brushing it down towards the tip. And then we're gonna blend it right in the middle. Alrighty, just like that. And then we're going to go in with the nude acrylic, working with just a little bit at a time, place it down, patting it down, and then brushing it down in the middle to blend it in with the white. Okay, so even though I grabbed a really small bead of the um, nude color, it's very pigmented. So as you can see, it took over a lot of the white. Maybe I grabbed a little bit too much. So I'm just going to go in with a little bit more white. I'm just going to place it at the tip and just blend it in.
Alrighty, so once we have both of the colors down, we're gonna go in with the clear one and we're gonna just encapsulate both of the colors together. Alrighty, so just like that. So now for this one, I think I'm gonna throw in some fall leaves. Okay, and these fall leaves are actually on my website and I'm just gonna add a few. I have some like brownish ones that I like in here. So I'm going to do a thin layer of the clear. And then with this one, I think I'm going to throw in a little bit of, let's see. Okay, so she does want some gold leaves or gold um, foil. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut that up. Alrighty, so instead of using these, I'm going to be using... Um, some other orange leaves and I also had these on a website, but unfortunately they already sold out But hopefully soon I'll have some more I feel like these would just look a lot better with the gold foil. So with this one, I'm gonna add let's see I'm still gonna use the same nude color, but it's gonna be more of like marble I'm just gonna kind of randomly place it on the nail I'm gonna add a little bit of white in there as well. Alrighty, just like that. And then I'm gonna go in and just pick up some leaves and place them on top of the acrylic while the acrylic is still kind of wet. Alrighty, then I'm gonna go in and just add like little pieces of the gold foil on top of the acrylic as well. Alrighty, so just like that and then I'm gonna go in and just encapsulate this with the clear so we got a nice size bead and we're gonna place this over the entire nail so as you can see again I love how it's not running um, with the Mia Secret usually if I just place the bead like that it will start running over to the sides and this one does not do that and it builds up the acrylic a lot faster so I don't have to keep going in and adding more acrylic and adding more and more. I'm going to show you that with just this one bead I was able to fully encapsulate the leaves in the acrylic. Okay. So as you can see, it is fully encapsulated. We have a nice thickness all around. We have a nice apex as well. And it just went on there perfectly. Now I might just add a little bit. It's like I have a little tiny gap close to the cuticle area, but I'm just gonna add a tiny little bit of acrylic right there. And then of course, just clean around the cuticle area. 
but that's it so again with the Mia Secret I would usually have to apply a bead and then apply more and apply more until I was able to build my apex and you know a nice thickness at the tip so I love that about this acrylic so for the pinky I think I'm just gonna do just all nude so I'm gonna go in and just do a bead of the clear again the reason why I'm doing the clear is because next time if she wants to you know take off the colored acrylic we can just file it off and we won't have to worry about having to do you know a whole new set because we can just file away that colored acrylic Alrighty, so we applied the bead of the nude on the pinky. And again, another thing that I really like about this is that it's so pigmented, so we don't have to add so much acrylic, like one bead just gets the job done. So now we're going in and encapsulating this with the clear. So honestly, I feel like this acrylic system would cut down my time um, because as you can see, all it took for this set was literally just the base, which was a small bead of the clear, um, one bead of the colored acrylic, and then one and just the tiny one of the clear over it to encapsulate it. And that was it. And I'll be sure to show you a side angle um, at the end so you can see, you know, that we have a nice thickness. Okay, so on this thumb, we're going to do an ombre as well. So same thing. We're going to do a small bead of the clear over the entire nail. Then we're going to do the white at the tip and the nude at the back and then encapsulating that with the clear. Alrighty y'all, so we finished the first hand. Um, before we start on the other hand, I do want to just say that as far as the monomer, I think I've already mentioned this, that the uh, smell is not as strong. Um, I actually don't have a fan on or my air conditioner on or even my air purifier on, which sometimes I feel like the air purifier, it sucks in a lot of the um, odor, but it's not, you know, like the odor is not very strong, like it's not bothering me. I know sometimes when I don't have anything on, um, I do feel like the Mia Secret is a bit stronger um, because I feel like all the odor kind of just goes right, you know, in my face because I'm working right here. But with this one, I haven't had any issues at all. Like, do you feel like it's um, stronger, like the the smell? 
Yes, it's not, you know, very strong or anything. It's like a normal monomer smell. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do this exact same thing on this other hand. So again, we're doing the pinky just all nude. We're doing the, the ring finger just clear, the middle finger and the thumb ombre. And then the index finger, we're going to do like the marble with the leaves and the foil.
Alrighty y'all, so we just finished applying the acrylic. So again, as you guys seen, I was only having to do like two or three beads on each nail. And as you can see, we have a really good foundation. We have a nice apex, we have a nice thickness at the tip and the colors just had a really good coverage. Um, and they all look really good. Um, it definitely did save me a lot of time uh, with applying the acrylic. It's a lot easier and faster to do a set um, since the acrylic, you know, I'm not having to apply so many coats of acrylic. And again, we still get a nice thickness, a nice apex, and just a flawless application overall or foundation overall. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next step. But again, we use the white, the ultra white, we use the clear, and we use the never enough nudes. We also use some gold foil and some leaves. So we're gonna go ahead and continue with the set and we'll be back. Alrighty, so next we're gonna go in and just reshape the nails. So we already have that shape that we want. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna file the sides straight out at a 90 degree angle in the free edge as well. Of course, we um, again, we already have that shape that we want. We just wanna redefine that shape because once you apply the acrylic, it kind of takes away from your shape a little bit. So same thing, filing at a 90 degree angle on these sides and then a 90 degree angle at the free edge as well. Alrighty y'all, so we just finished reshaping the nails. So now we're gonna go in with a fine drill bed and we're gonna be filing the nails. Again, I'm using the Scarlet um, Melody Susie Nail Drill. And to file the acrylic, I usually use it at 10,000 RPMs. But again, it kind of depends on what you feel comfortable using it on, whether it's faster or slower. But this is something that you're just going to have to figure out on your own. Um, because, you know, the way to basically decide what speed you want to use it at is just, you know, starting the drill and using it maybe at a low speed. And then if you feel like it's going too slow, then of course, just speed it up. But anyways, um, as always, we're going to start around the cuticle area, going from the right side, working your way around to the left side. Just going back and forth until you're able to see where the cuticle is, where the natural nail is, and where the acrylic is. And remember not to leave your drill in one spot for too long because it will cause friction. So same thing for all of the nails. Start around the cuticle area, work your way around, and just keep going back and forth again until you're able to see where your cuticle is, where the natural nail is, and where the acrylic is. That way you know that the acrylic is not on the skin and also following the rest of the nail to make sure that it's all nice and smooth.
Alrighty, so we just finished falling all of the nails with the fine drill bed. So now we're gonna go in with the buffer and we're just gonna buff the nails really good. And as always, this is just going to help get rid of the scratches on the nail left on there from the hand file or the e-file. So again, make sure that you buff really, really good. Alrighty, so we uh, buff the nails and dust them off. So now I'm gonna go in and just wipe them off with an alcohol wipe. And this is just going to help remove that dust. Alrighty, so um, this is what they look like after we finish doing all of the acrylic. Now, one thing that I did um, notice was that, again, the colors are very pigmented. So on this one, I feel like I didn't get the colors to blend very well. Um, this was the first ombre nail, so I used a lot of the nude color, which I'm sure you guys noticed. Uh, so to cover that up, I'm going to be adding some bling in the middle. I didn't notice that until after I had already did the clear acrylic over the nail but the rest you know they looked a lot better um the key to doing the ombre with these is just not using so much of the um cover color that you're going to be using at the back again it's good that they have a good coverage but i just didn't know how you know like like a little bit of product goes a long way so try not to use as much when you're working with them um but now we're gonna again just go in and apply some bling um, so for the bling on the ring finger, I'm going to go in with my um, Harp on it by Color Club. And we're going to apply that on the ring fingers. Alrighty, so for my bling, I'm going to be using the Soleil Bling Adhesive. Um, so we're going to be applying that on the nail, just brushing it on. And then with my wax pencil, I'm going to go in and apply the SS6 and the SS12. As always, I start around the cuticle area first and I work my way around the perimeter of the nail and just filling in the nail as I go. Alrighty, so just like that so then again on the middle finger I'm gonna just add some right in the middle
Alrighty, so just like that. And then I think just so the other two aren't playing, I'm just gonna go in and just apply a little one closer to the cuticle area. And then after that, I'm gonna go in and spray them with the Mie Secret Joresin Activator. And that's just gonna help that glue dry a lot faster. And for my top coat, I'm gonna be using the Diamond Gel, which is a top coat by Nail Supply Glamour. Alrighty, so we applied the top coat on this hand, so now we're gonna go ahead and let that cure for 60 seconds, and we're gonna do the same thing on the other hand. Alrighty, so we finished applying all of the bling on this hand as well. So same thing, we're gonna go in there and just apply the top coat on this hand and then cure for 60 seconds. Alrighty y'all, so here is the final look. So again, we used the Glam and Glitz acrylic system and they turned out very pretty. I love the colors that I got and I just love the way the acrylic goes on very, very easily. And most definitely, I am probably gonna be switching over to this brand very soon because I just love how easy it is to work with. So if you use this brand, be sure to let us know down below and give us your opinion on this brand and hope you guys enjoyed.